So let's continue our conference journey up north in Cairo, Egypt. Some of the teams that were there, mm -hmm. we also saw a debutant team uh, that we may, it, we feel like they really deserve to be in Kigali. That was Bangui's, yeah. uh, the sports Sierra. club. Yeah, right. sports club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what happened? What, why did they make it? And how, I mean, how did they not make it? The maths did not favor them. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> the maths just did we, not favor them. And Cape Town Tigers took the spot. We really have no we idea. We our brains for them. That you one. Know, Bangui was three and three. Yeah. Uh, made sense for them to... to, to Mathematically speaking, yeah, they yeah, should to, have been there. To, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. But for whatever reason, you know, the, the BAL folks said... Uh, the BAL gods. Yeah, you're right. They said, said, <laughs> said, said uh, not this... Like the Dikembe Matambo? No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> Not this time. Thank you. Maybe next time. Yes. But all in all, regardless, they definitely should be very happy with, with how they played. Absolutely. Um, they came out, you know, as a debutante team, you always have the disadvantage of not understanding what it means to play in this tournament, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Like, you play in this in this season, it's, it's not like as easy as your regular club games mm -hmm. it doesn't feel the same it's not if if it's your first go around you're playing with players that have had experiences elsewhere mm -hmm. right so for them to come into it and you know go up against in the same conference with Al Ahli Libya, mm -hmm. who made it all the way to the finals. Mm -hmm. Al Ahli Egypt, mm -hmm. who were the defending champions, you know. And do really well. And do really yes, well, you yes. know, and still be able to come out, you know, and say, look, we we were really here and we showed that we're not just, uh, you can't just push us over. Yes, absolutely. So, but so they did not make it. However, Cape Town Tigers made it. Mm -hmm. And we called it the Cinderella. Oh, I called it the Cinderella story of, uh, of the BL this year. They were not supposed to be in the playoffs but they went they actually showed that they deserve to be there yeah um as you mentioned mathematically speaking cape town tigers did, was not supposed to be there however they did make it and even when they did make it i think one thing and once again i keep pointing out i've had a lot of conversations with a lot of the players who play for cape town tigers and what they for them they had a chip on the shoulder because everybody from the jump mm -hmm. um all the way th and when i say from the jump i'm talking about the playoffs mm -hmm. really ruled them out and said cape town tigers is the weakest team at the playoffs um everybody expected this to be a walk in the park when you're playing against cape town tigers but i think they shocked a lot of people making it all the way to the uh that third place playoff mm -hmm. um for them they really and I, I remember saying this when i was talking about who they'll be playing next mm. they didn't want rivers mm. there a lot of them were like ah oh, please lord give us petro de luanda <laughs> yeah. because they have right. that we contract. Right. Yes, they right. play petro they know how petro plays mm -hmm. and they've beat petro before mm -hmm. um so for them i think that was their dream is like we really want petro and of course that didn't happen yeah and they not can lost, we talk but, yeah. about I, which one of the games, I think actually the most phenomenal games of the whole playoffs was Cape Town Tigers playing Cape against. Town. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. You guys were in studio for that game. Listen, How was the when energy? I, when I, when was when I, shouting <laughs> and shouting. Bro. When like, I tell you, it was a lot if, of oh. If, if, there, if there was a mic, or if there was, if there, not a mic, if there was visual representation, <laughs> of, because okay. it, this was radio, because yeah. this was a radio uh, uh, session radio, that we were doing. Yeah. If there was any video footage of that, you would see all sorts of stuff, jumping and screaming, and just because yeah, there was the so much was, excitement. Yeah, absolutely. If if you think about that, at one point, Foos scored thirteen unanswered points yeah. with two minutes left in the fourth quarter, yeah. like to blow a ten point lead for You're Cape up, Town. Yeah, for Cape Town, the, yeah. right? Was unbelievable. But then, what I loved about it was not only were they able to first off. Shout out Sam Kello, Sam Kello. Kello. Oh. for the the, yes. the shot that basically took that, it to OT. Oh, Three-pointer, yeah. he came down. You know, sometimes when you're the big man on campus, you know, as they say in colleges, <laughs> right? You got to take the tough shots. Absolutely. He has to live with it if he misses that mm -hmm. shot. But when he scored that shot, man, took it to overtime. Absolutely. And then they were able to, to finish it through. But honestly, when I'm looking at it, I feel like Foos didn't really play their style that game because I think Cape Town made it uncomfortable for them. Uh, but they rallied back, you know, that showed a lot of resilience and yeah. they tried to, you know, they tried their very best, but unfortunately Cape Town was just the better team that, that, that day. I think Cape Town really shocked, uh, Fus. Uh, I, I, once again, not to say that Fus expected it to be a walk in the park, but yeah. you could tell from their approach from the jump that yeah. they expected to walk out this yeah. uh, emerging victors, right. uh, which not enough to anybody, right. anybody going in, you're going into win. Especially if you're Fus, who's coming but, into it as the number one ranked team absolutely. into the you're playoffs. You're playing against mm -hmm. the team that everybody's Every, ruled right, out. I right. think they were walked into that but seeing that resilience yeah. and once again it was a back and forth situation right. where Fus would 
would take the lead. Mm -hmm. Cape Town would come back. Cape Town would take the lead. Mm -hmm. Up until that dying moment, that last final minute. It wasn't one, two yeah, minutes. It was yeah, last minute. Yeah, last minute. When Cape Town Tigers is 10 points up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see Fools pulling back yeah. every stride by the goes. Um, up until that moment yeah, and where... And Tinsel Kello spoils it for them. Then, <laughs> yeah. Even then. Yeah. So uh, that's even then. As they approached and it went into that OT, you could see that Fus was still like, okay, we're shocked, but we still need to win. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. We still need to win. <laughs> but this. the momentum at that point had shifted, had shifted had to absolutely, Cape Town. Absolutely. When, you, so, hit, when you, hit a bun, you hit a buzzer beater yeah. it's a, that it's takes me to the next level, momentum. now everything is You're riding high. Yes. I'm back. Absolutely. That's a thirteen to three run, by Absolutely. the way. And bear in mind, <laughs> they now had to have some Gelukselip run as the big man. Yeah, He's right. now the point guard, right? Like, because from, because both... Diara was out and yeah. then Dan got was hurt. Out and, exactly. Wow. So, so now some Gelukselip, who is typically not uh, uh, the point, point guard, guard yes. is now the guy who's running the ball, which was very interesting. Absolutely. To see how he conformed into that. Right? Absolutely. He actually some Kello, uh made the list for the. Uh, Oh, the 2024 all BAL defensive team, which surprised yeah. you guys. Interesting. Yeah. To me, I see him as an offensive player, but it showed that he had to take on a different aspect this year with this team mm -hmm. in order to assist defensively as well. You know, if you really look at the numbers, he was number two right after Luol yeah. on the uh, top scoring list. So mm -hmm. he was right there. You mm -hmm. know, if he just maybe had a couple more points in his last he game, would he would have been right there with him. So mm -hmm. kudos to him for playing on both sides of the court. That shows me that this is a person who you want to go to a war with. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, so Absolutely. shout out to him. Now, unfortunately, there are some players from uh, Cape Town Tigers that dropped out right after they left at the <laughs> Karahari yes. Conference, yes. Lebesa Lebe Selebe, who yes. we had on the yes. show. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what their future, what the future holds for them, but I'm uh -huh. sure they were not feeling so so good after seeing how well one the first of all the f the fact that the team made it to Kigali, yes, yes, but yes, how well yes, they performed yes, in Kigali. Yes. I don't know what their future holds for them in relation to this team. Well, I mean, Lebesa still he's he doesn't play for the Cape Town Tigers anymore, mm -hmm. um, but he still is playing uh, basketball. Uh, I'll call it professionally right now. Uh, the last time I checked on his Instagram page, he's playing a uh, four three and three tournament representing South Africa, so he's still doing his thing, uh, playing basketball, but. Uh, there's been conversations with other people asking them, hey, so what's going on? How, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. I, I actually spoke to BP, Billy, Pre uh, Billy Preston. I also spoke to um, uh, Prince Lou. Yeah. Um, and both of them were like, oh, wow, well, you know, it, if there ever was a time to play for the Tigers. It right, was now. Be <laughs> right, right, you know, right. Because right. they were this close. Right. They were this close. Yeah. And, and that's that's been the furthest that the Tigers have Absolutely. gone since right. season now, one. 